Hello, and today I would like to demonstrate my um, progress on building an analog computer so far. Um, here's the board. It performs one integration and one summation. Um, these are used, as you can see, they have labels of aux, aux, aux. Sorry, it's upside down. Times one, times ten, times a hundred. Same thing here. And these are all precision components and it performs one integration using one of these capacitors you, you can select which one and one summation this sets the, the initial condition and these two LF412 op amps perform the calculation this sets the, the initial condition here this actually is the initial condition as a variable voltage and I'm going to show this one integrator is capable of solving several differential equations so basically what you have is this you have a potentiometer between the plus and minus supply, precision of course, sets the initial condition and various inputs are summed and the negative integral is taken by the op amp circuit. The exact schematic is this right here. When it's in this position it's actually integrating because these are being summed at this junction which is that virtual ground of the plus junction and it's taking the negative integral of T0 to, to the, current, the stopped time or whenever time you're at of 1 divided by RC. Again, C is C is not shown here, but C actually, let me correct that real fast. C would actually go, I'm sorry, it's the most important element. C would actually go like this. So, 1 divided by RC depends on which R it's on, and again, this has options on this board in increments of, um, again I'll zoom in, this is one of the ones that wasn't assembled yet. Again times 100 times 10 times 1 times 0.1 and aux means you can just add a resistor manually. This is what the board looks like when it's back from the fab. Again it's incomplete. But um, let me zoom out here. Effectively it performs the integral. Now when it's in the, the opposite position on both of these it puts the negative initial condition across this capacitor and so the relay can control the integrator and that's a cornerstone of what an analog computer can do. Again, my key points is I'm using well, I'm sorry, my, my key points include my first point which is that I'm including modular circuit boards to be fabbed and assembled. Again, each one of these can do one integral and one summation and I have three thanks to the generous um, again gift of Georgia Tech which fabbed these and bought the components. Um, second thing is I've been able to get this board to work correctly. I've tried since December 5th and I haven't had any luck at all getting it to work but recently it's worked due to the fact that one of these power pins was not connected right but now that it was resoldered the board has worked as advertised. And my third point is that you know we, we, we can use these with a plotter and a or an oscilloscope or technically a sampler to solve useful systems and that's the whole point of computing it's to solve a useful system and I'm going to now give a demonstration of how this can be done one second here of how this can be done so let's think of this system dy of dt equals negative one initial condition is ten now the solution we all know from calculus is negative t plus 10, um, which, is the, which is the integral from, of 0 to, to t of 1 tau, uh, no, of 1 d tau plus the initial condition, which is 10. Ic means initial condition. But now, how would this apparatus here show this equation? And well, it's, it's very simple. We can actually very straightforwardly make the circuit emulate this and actually I'm going to now show that in fact we can show an analogous system by setting this on a, a plus reference voltage, voltage this is 5 volts we'll assume it's scaled but the character would be the same if it were 1 volt actually and um, so we have this on that connection and this is the one mega ohm resistor on one of the aux pins and 
we aren't using feedback so I can turn this off and as you can see in the scope we have to set the initial condition which is actually setting the negative initial condition on that potentiometer to 10 and we're not quite there yet and so I can now you can see that it's almost on the second increment but not quite there so let me adjust this real fast until it's almost exactly 10 and again you can get pretty darn close with these these are all 1% components and they typically can go better than 1% tolerance just a second there you can see I have the initial condition here is now steady state voltage is 10.001 that's very close to being exactly 10 and you can see it's at two increments up and again it's not changing because it's in the initial condition mode and so in this real circuit the relay is in the opposite position to this and again there's a coil below this an electromagnetic coil and again this could be made solid state in a fairly straight sorry a fairly straightforward manner so now I'm going to swap the computer from steady state mode to integrate mode and you'll see the solution it slowly starts to fall until it linearly equals the saturation voltage on the op amp. So now when I release it, it resets the, the initial condition. And now, once more. Again, if we had a plotter, it would be increasingly obvious that this was, in fact, a straight line. But since the scope can't show this, I can speed up the simulation by a factor of 10 by changing the capacitance from one microfarad to one tenth of a microfarad and I've done this now and so now you can see it is in fact a straight line well that doesn't quite so show it exactly but it is a straight line Let me, um, this will show it you see it that were on again I scaled the voltage there so it would be shown faster um, so in fact it, it did actually solve this system it gave a it gave a line of the form negative T plus a constant and if we had carefully scaled these you would find they were within one percent or less error from the analog computer now that's all well and good but it leads to an interesting let me um let me color balance here. Wait a minute. Why is this thing not? Doesn't quite look right in the color. Um give me just a minute here. Menu. Um the color balance is off. I'll fix this for the next video. Let's see if it goes away when I turn this off. Not really. Huh. But, um, probably because my computer screen is so blue. It's not red in here. But, um, it's all well and good, but can it do something more useful? And the answer is yes. So, now we're going to take into account a more complicated system. dy dt equals negative y where y at 0 is going to equal 10. We all know from calculus this is going to equal y is going to equal 10 to the e negative t because when you differentiate that you're going to get the negative sign that flips out to the positive. Um, negative sign flips out in front of the negative 10 and then that satisfies the equation. Well let's assume we don't know what the solution looks like. Well if we don't know what the solution looks like then unless we have a different analytical tool we can't solve it unless we're using an analog computer in which case we can notice the initial condition is 10 you can also set it to 7.5 the same results would apply so our initial condition is the same which is on this oscilloscope but now we have to introduce the feedback 
oh, excuse me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the constant value and I'm going to reconnect the feedback term. So now it's taking its own output and feeding that back. You can see this is the output junction here and feeding that back across into this point one times or one make one mega ohm input junction. And let's set it to C1 so you can see what's going on here. Alright, so now you can see the the results right here on this oscilloscope. And when we hook it up back into integration mode, Again, you might have had trouble seeing that that's a, um, an exponential graph. So let's see what happens when we have times 10 on the speed. Oops. Again, I, I'm going to build a multivibrator to control the system. I haven't done it, so I'm just doing it by hand here. Just a second. All right. Again, you might still have difficulty realizing that's an exponential. So I'm going to scale the scale factor here, I'm going to turn it on between one point one and one. Just one second while I do that real fast. Um, all right. See, I'm, I'm I'm in my finished project. I'm going to have this done by a matrix of analog switches, which will have to be carefully constructed to avoid undesirable effects. Okay, so now the simulation is theoretically running at a hundred times faster than what it was before, so we should see the exponential evidently here. And so now when we set it to solve the equation, oops, I'm sorry, oops, one second. See that? See that it's, it's quick now. If I had a plotter, this would be obvious. All right, but it it gives the exponential decay, which is exactly what we would expect. I'm sorry, this is red. It's not color correcting. From plus 10 volts decays down to zero, as this equation analytically indicates. Now for our final system, what happens if we're integrating negative y minus 5? In other words, what happens if we, we, we add the term we have, which we had initially, and let me turn on the light here, we had initially, and then we add the first terms. So they're both running at once. And again, the scale factor will have to be corrected one second so that both are on the same footing, both across a 1 mega ohm, which is in, the, in our scale convention 0.1. Again, that's because of the equation I mentioned earlier for the integrator. And, all right, now it's set. And so now we have the same initial condition of y equals 10. And we're going to try negative 10 as well. So I'll show you how you can change the initial condition and we know the analytic solution is this, so it's going to behave as if it starts at the, at the initial condition and goes down to the point where that constant term is, which in this case will be five. But um, let's see what the let's see what the scope gives. Anyways, um, again, the timing on this scope is not set right either. Um, this will show it much clearer. I, I changed the scale from five milliseconds down to 200 so that this will take several seconds to draw a frame alright so let me turn it on now alright in case you didn't catch that let me do it again here there you can clearly see it's an exponential and at the first increment that's negative 5 so it does, in fact, follow the solution I, um, I mentioned earlier. And um, 
it effectively solves the initial value problem rather accurately. Um, and actually, let me turn off the initial condition from the, um, not initial condition, the, the forcing function here, or the negative 5. Let me, uh, let me turn that off for a second so you can see what the exponential curve looks like when there's no forcing function. You can see clearly an exponential decay. Sorry. There. The one time it screwed up a second ago is because the relay is being controlled by hand and my hand is twitchy. But um so um yeah, um it's it's very evident that an analog circuit such as this one right here can simulate many interesting problems and rather accurately and it gives you a feel for what differential equations you know feel like and if you were to find the solution analytically you would find that y prime equals negative 10 e to the negative x minus 5 again starting at 10 ending at negative 5 and going in between but what happens if we have a negative initial condition so as you see the line is at two increments which is plus 10 the, the positive saturation Let's take it down here. So just give me one second to adjust the coefficient by this trim pot here. And the system itself allows for a buffer amplifier to feed the initial condition from the trim pot into the integrator so that there's no loading. It has a very high input impedance, very low output impedance which again is very important in electrical engineering that it behaves like this you want a stiff source and a high impedance load again just one second just to see how close I can get this There. Almost exactly 10 volts, 9.98 volts, which is, again, wait for it. All right, and you can see that line clearly is right here. So what happens if we reattach the forcing function? Give me one second. And again, this could be solved by separation of variables a, a technique used in elementary differential equations. Okay, but what happens if we now run the system? And the answer is it obeys the differential equation because the system is analogous to it and the graph will look like thus. One second. Sorry, don't, don't, don't look at that, that's not right. There. Again, an exponential decay to the equilibrium position of x equals negative 5, or, or y actually is what I called it. You can see it defaults back to the, to the initial condition in the resting state. And so over these two pages, I've, I've shown that it is possible to make a circuit board. Again, it was made using, using Eagle. I'd recommend um, most books. That, that explain how to use Eagle. It's very simple, very efficient, not too expensive. These probably cost 40 or 50 bucks. Again, thank you um, Georgia Tech for your research money. But um, yeah, in this video I've shown you how a simple first order equation can be modeled and controlled by um, input parameters via an analog computer. And it's really um, a thing of, um, of beauty. Alright, um, thank you for your time.